Um, so yeah, thank you very much everybody for being here today, online and in person. It has been a record crowd. The numbers that I've been told for the people online has been high. There's been some real banter actually in the YouTube live channel, uh, which I saw a little bit of. So I'm glad everybody's having a good time, even if they couldn't be here. Uh, I just wanted to wrap up really with um, where the project is, is going from here, as we've done for the last few years. What, what do we expect going forward? It's usually an opportunity for me to make stuff up on the spot that then commits us for the year ahead. Um, but now I have got the eyes of other project contributors in front of me, or uh, facial expressions, sorry, um, of other contributors. So I can't go too far down off piste. I'll, I'll, I'll try and um, con convey what has been discussed already rather than just make it up as we go along. So we are essentially going to continue along the release cycle of a major release every four to six months. With every, every open source project, people have time sometimes and then not others. It's difficult to just say, here's a release date, because it's more important to us that features are polished and delivered really well, although we do like the rhythm of two to three re major releases a month. So we're, we're going to try and stick to that. And in between those times, a bug fix release roughly every month is helping us to keep on top of the things that um, are niggling folk in between times, if it's maybe a new feature or just something um, that has been discovered uh, on an old one, possibly because an OS upgrade has um, taken us down a different code path. So we'll keep delivering those. If you are having an issue, raise it on the tracker or in the community and somebody will help to get on top of that. We are beginning planning for the 2.5 release and in fact, we have, thankfully, already had a discussion in the contributor group about what that might include. And at long last, we've got the enabling of the text handling that was mentioned before to mean that we can really do some proper translation and internationalization work, which is going to be really important. It's unbelievable how much this technology is used in countries where the documentation is no good for them and the, <laughs> the language that the, is supported by the default uh, fonts doesn't even handle. There are some pretty uh, smart folk publishing workarounds that helps them and their community get on um, and work well with, with the tech that we have broadly released in English. Undo and redo support. I can't believe it. it's, it's not been there for up until, up until now. Actually, it's really exciting because that has landed already. Uh, Darwin has, uh, in their first PR for Fine, actually, just gone ahead and implemented that for us. So it's not just we would like to release it. It is coming if you want to use it. It's in the unreleased develop branch already. So that's, that's pretty excellent. And also the Wayland support that was mentioned in the Flatpak talk as well. Thanks, Jacob, for keeping me, <laughs> reminding me. Um, it's, it's Linux latest technology on the desktop. We need, to, we need to get there. And there's been a few internal implementation details that were needed to resolve before we could. Now we can. So that's uh, one of those expected to be delivered in 2.5 releases, um, features. And also, the experience on mobile is something that we're going to be improving, spending a lot of time on. Uh, it's, I mean, it works. Absolutely, it's a fully supported platform and things function correctly. The tools that we've explored mean that you can get your app there right away. But it doesn't have quite the polish and performance of the desktop platforms. Uh, it perhaps just needs a little bit more love. Um, and some of the keyboard handling, there's been a few bugs raised recently. We're going to get on top of that. Um, and I'll touch on that a little bit more. Uh, so yes, what are we doing in translation? What's going to be possible in this upcoming release? Well, more languages are going to be supported than we currently do out of the box. There will be an API for applications to understand the current locale of their users. So um, something along the lines of where they based, what are their language expectations, that is going to be necessary for the toolkit, but also for applications to present things like date pickers, lang um, language selections, uh, and as it turned out, as we got into the detail of how do you render text well, it's not just a case of looking at the characters and drawing them on screen. You do need to understand um, the user's configuration to hint at how text should be rendered, which kind of blew my mind when I realized. So we're working on that. And because we can't bundle 
fonts for every language in the world. We're pulling in support for accessing uh, fonts on the existing system. So in a situation where it wouldn't be possible to give a consistent font experience anyway, we're looking up on the platform for something that can do a half decent job or possibly a better job depending on the exact context. That's a little bit further down the work that we're going to do, but it will enable um, a big step towards full internationalization um, because there's, it's just not possible to bundle absolutely everything internally. So I mentioned improving the mobile experience. I've got here mobile, keyboard, keyboard, mobile. I mean, it's just a little bit complicated. The hardware keyboard on mobile isn't really supported because we have soft keyboards, which is great. Um, but soft keyboards can cover your app. So folk have started um, having to work around so that bits of their app can be more visible when keyboards come up. We want to make this just work out of the box. It's not a thing that you should have to worry, spend any time on. So we're going to spend more time on the mobile experience, particularly around the areas of keyboard and scroll speed is one of the areas of performance that we're working on to make sure that the next release is as polished on mobile as it has become on the desktop platforms. And this will also include, enabled by some of the other technological changes and implementations under the hood, more mobile platforms. I know that Fine, uh, Pinephone and Librem was on the list of things we wanted to have released already, um, but there was items that just got in, in the way technically that's, that, that blocked it. That's done, so we can do that. And as sort of was mentioned in workshops this morning, getting apps onto mobile can still be a bit of challenge because of certification, provisioning, all sorts of things that don't make sense when you don't want to think about the specific platform. So we're going to see how to make the whole experience in deploying on mobile better. Of course, we need shiny new widgets, no different than any other product. We've got to add new stuff. And the first one that came up, uh, which you did see earlier today, is the inner window and the ability to have multiple inner windows as well so they can overlap, interact, move around. Uh, that too, I'm happy to say, has already landed in our development code base, so you can play with it, and that's what I showed you was code that's, that's readily available already, so that's pretty cool. The activity indicator has been requested before. You don't always want or know how long your progress is going to take. You might just want a quick um, visual that says something's busy. Maybe you're overlaying a button that's currently disabled while something is worked on. So an activity indicator, a, a pulser, or um, these have various different names. Spinner is another. We have an animation that's going to drop in as the activity um, widget that allows you to put that into various different places, just rounding out different ways that you can ask users to hang on just a moment. And OK, maybe I did just drop this one in. But the date time um, is something that we've not done particularly well from user input selection. FineX has a great date widget. I'm not just saying that um, because it was implemented by, by Derek, who uh, snuck in there and joined us. Uh, but the expectation is that we'll bring that into the main repository with an input widget that is going to adapt to use the operating system method. So maybe it's the widget. Maybe it's throwing up a, a date picker like your phone would provide. So we'll just try to um, integrate in the way that entries and other pickers already have. The last thing that's kind of big picture planned for this 2.5 is to improve form validation, particularly around required elements. So an item in a form can have validation. Um, I don't know if we had an example today, but when it's not passing validation, there'll be an error showing you where the problem is, and a submit button would be disabled. That's be default behavior. But we realized that very frequently, people were implementing an empty string validation because they wanted it to be a required field. And actually, that's something different. We want to mark required so people know the expectation is it's non-blank. So that's one of the, the other features. We're, we're updating form, improving the validation, and setting it so that required is a particular type of um, uh, input that we can present to the user. Plus, well, I mean, it's the first time that we've got a captive audience in the room, and we've got more people ever, more people than ever online. If you have a thought about the widgets that we should be adding in the upcoming release, this is your opportunity. Shout out, or you know, say it quietly, write it down on a scrap of paper and slide it over the table. 
all's good. It's nice to hear from people what they think is going to be valuable to the project. And for myself, I think for people working on the project, another really important part of growing this uh, ecosystem is to be spreading the word. There's things that we can do. We're going to be listing more apps. So if you have an app, share it. Fill in the form, the little submit button, and tell us about the piece of software that you want. As you saw earlier, that will become more widely distributed just by way of having it listed in the database that we're building up. And we want to do more to help you not only tell people that you have an app, but to get it out there distributed. So the infrastructure that we have in place for um, deploying apps across multiple platforms is going to become more widely available for open source developers who want to be um, shared through the platforms that we're building. So we don't have anything specific there, but get in touch if you're interested and we'll let you know um, over the coming weeks. Documentation and tutorials. I didn't just write the app because up because I was listening to a talk earlier. It is something we need to do more of. And as the project accelerates forward, we need to accelerate the documentation as well, or it gets behind and folk use great new things, but don't have the, the experience or the confidence of the documentation behind it. But here's what you can do. You can share your knowledge and experience of the platform with colleagues, friends, um, your next door neighbor, I mean, you know, next time you're thinking about talking about the weather, why not tell them about this really amazing graphical toolkit for building apps simpler than ever before and show them it working on your phone with no code changes. So we want to get out there. If you're going to a conference, if you're presenting um, something at work, this is an opportunity to tell folk, actually, this, this is an interesting space. It may not be the right solution for you, but the more people involved, the more feedback we can get, the better we can shape it up for, for everybody. And be part of this, this community. I think you've seen a lot of what people want to give um, in the support they are giving, the applications they're creating, the conversations and um, discussions that we have. Be part of it. You've, you've been here today. Stay in touch um, and yeah, let us know how you think. If that's not enough, I have some specific ideas about what you could do. Um, well, you can learn more. I think I've linked a few document uh, development documentation pages before. Um, if you're joining us online, you probably know that we have a YouTube channel. Uh, and there's a lot of good videos there. Everything that you've seen today will be uploaded at some, uh, at some point over the coming weeks. So um, check out for more videos being added to the FineConf 2023 YouTube playlist. But also, there's lots of ways that you can contribute to the project. Like I said, you could just tell us what you think is going to be helpful. But you could do code. You could be one of these heroes that gets a congratulatory, oh my goodness, you've contributed your first thing to this project, thanks. And it may even be in a release only months or two away from now. But documentation, design, anything that you think is going to help the project, or if you want to know how you could get involved with skills that you've got, then join one of the channels and, uh, and we'll help you figure that out. Do um, Share your apps, like I said, help us grow the, the list of applications that we know about in the open source world. And if you would like to, it would be lovely if you would sponsor the project. Um, we've been very lucky with generous sponsors over the years, and it makes it possible to do things like this along with local sponsors, but uh, to be able to put together, I don't know, t-shirts or uh, um, stickers, and to be uh, in the future taking people to new venues We've been able to thank the speakers for being here today by contributing to their travel expenses. As we travel around the world, it would be great to help more people get together because it's an event like this that I think a lot of the interesting discussions happen and we figure out where to take the project forward. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here, for your attention and your enthusiasm, and we will see you at the next event. <laughs>